This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. His latest album, Time Clocks, which actually hit number one on Billboard's Blues album chart. He's done that before. Uh, recorded right here in NYC. It's Joe Bonamassa in the studio with us, and uh, he's playing Jones Beach August 19th with the Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band. And Jason Bottoms, Led Zeppelin Evening. Those tickets are on sale now, LiveNation.com. All the info about Joe at Bonamassa.com. Joe, the last time we spoke was actually via Zoom. That's right. Um, I think it was around the Royal T album. So it's great to have you back in our studio. So actually sitting across from each other. It's great to be back in person. I, I it's, it's, It was weird at first when people were getting back together, but now it just it seems like it's normal again. You yeah, know? And, and Zoom is, yes, it's very convenient. Yeah. And it you know, allows you to do things and talk to people that you might not be able to talk to because whatever, they weren't coming to New York or L.A. or whatever like that. It's much better in the studio. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, and I love this building. It's the last time I'll be in this building, and oh. I just, I, you know, it's the the, the classic Q one hundred and four building, and 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 you know, I always love coming here because yeah. because of this building, and and to and see the you guys. lobby and the lobby yeah. is ridiculous. We got our own subway stop. It's like Art Deco on steroids. Um, the studio's legendary. The amount of people that have been in this chair that I'm sitting at, you know. It's, you know, I'm nostalgic for that kind of history. Absolutely. You know, uh, I've been trolling your Instagram. Sorry, but I love to watch and listen to you play, obviously. You do a lot of that on there. You uh, make me salivate with all the guitars and yeah. the amps and the pedals that you're buying. Um, and I also noticed in one clip you are playing, uh, and we were sort of touching on this before the interview, you are playing in a room and behind you is a sign that says, nerdville gotham yes tell us about nerdville <laughs> gotham well you know uh, clearly i'm not married you know that's obvious from all the photos is i i name the places that I, I i live i'm lucky enough i have three places i have a place in los angeles nashville and then uh recently uh last three years i've been spending a lot of time here in new york city and i call them nerdville because that's kind of what we've branded them as and uh, this one is Gotham, and I had a, a sign maker in Los Angeles, and uh, she makes great signs. And neon sign, right? Neon sign. And um, the sign uh, said Nerdville Gotham. It's obviously based on Radio City Music Hall, which I was lucky enough to play a couple of yes. times. Yes. And um, the great thing about that was it was shipped from Los Angeles in a gigantic crate that they were happy to leave on the street. It was right on the corner of 63rd. And some other cross street, right. and they left it. And my my friend Rick, who was here helping me move in, I go, I think that's the sign. He goes, I don't think so. Why would they just leave it? They left it. It they, wasn't stolen. No, the nobody would steal it because porch pirate did not take it. It was so heavy that nobody right, could, yeah, nobody could like just. It was an old gigantic wooden crate. It looked like a grand piano showed up. But finally, we got it up there, and it and it works. It's a it's a fun uh, it's a, it's a fun thing to light up, and people come over and they're like. Wow, you really have a giant neon sign in your living room. I go, yeah, <laughs> don't you? Nerdville Gotham. Right. You know, your bio on Instagram, I just noticed this the other day. It says, semi-retired guitar player. That's right. What are you talking about? Well, you know, obviously for the last couple of years, you know, everybody, you know, faced their own career mortality. It's like, it's like, are we ever going to... No touring. Yeah. And are we? Is it ever going to get back to this? And, you know, the, the low moment for me is when we did um, in... in May of 2021, our first shows back as a band, getting back on the bus, and we were doing these truncated audience shows. You know, right. it's like like certain towns would let you play to a, to a quarter capacity. Uh, you know, certain towns will let you play to 50 percent. And we went out just to see how it was, and it was the most demoralizing experience of my life when when somebody goes hey you know the, the, i remember this place in i want to say augusta georgia uh, we were playing as one, one of these venues and they came up to me and was like uh, uh mr bonamas we, we have a plaque for you for being the, the the only artist to sell out in this format i said i said no i don't want it i said there's 25 percent capacity here and it looked empty you know the right, place yeah, held three thousand yeah. people right and we had 600 people scattered amongst you know I said, give me the plaque when we put all 3,000 in. And uh, that was the low point. That's when I was like, if this is how it's going to be, I'm not sure if I want to keep doing this. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's, cause it's, you know, it's like, it's great to go out and entertain 
but you know, I need an audience. I, I can't just sit at home and, you know, make tracks or, or make records or God forbid, be on Instagram I mean, all yeah. day. It's like, I, I, I'm an entertainer. There are some artists that that's their world and they're cool with that. But yeah. most of them are like you. We want to go out and play in front of our, our fans. Yeah. And, and like they were floating ideas of doing like, you know, virtual concerts, meaning that they're, you know, kind of like you would, you would be on a, a green screen and they're broadcasting these things into theaters and stuff like that. I'm like, the whole point of me doing this is because I love to travel and I love to make music and I love waking up every day in a different city going, we start at zero, even though if we had a great show the night before or a bad show the night before, we can redeem ourselves by starting at zero and, and, you know, moving forward. So. Uh, I also saw on your Instagram, you saw Eric Krasnow and Soul Live at uh, Brooklyn Bowl over the weekend. I did. I, I the, A friend of mine has been, been trying to get me out of the Upper West Side. I, I'm kind of stuck in my own ways and, and don't travel much. You know, like this is as far downtown as I go, right, right. where we are right now. And uh, Eric pinged me and said, hey, you know, we're playing the Brooklyn Bowl. And I was like, you know what? Let's go. You know, yeah. and, and uh, it was great. Well, for the fried chicken alone, I mean, come on, Brooklyn Bowl, right? It's it's a it's a legendary place, and you know, it works. Uh, you know, Peter Shapiro, when when he first opened it, I was like, I don't bowling and gigs at yeah. the same time, and food, and food, yeah, it works. Yeah, it, it works. It's like this crazy concept, but it's a, it's a such a unique uh, place, and I think he's got three or four of them now. He's got yeah, one he in Nash Nashville and, and Vegas. I think there's one in Vegas. He's amazing. Now, uh, the last thing I'll touch on on your Instagram, I, mm -hmm. I, I noticed that you were hanging out with uh, one of our good friends here, Brian Ray, yeah. uh, from Paul McCartney's band, and you were at Rudy's Music yeah. uh, in Soho here in the city. Now, I'm just wondering, did you go to the Paul McCartney show at MetLife Stadium? I was. I had to get back to Los Angeles uh uh, to to start a record with uh, a guy named Mark Broussard. And uh, I produced a record along with my friend Josh Smith this month. We started that record and we did another record. So I was, I unfortunately was going to miss it, but Brian was in town for a while because they were hubbing out of New York. Yeah. And um, he was like, hey man, let's grab a coffee and hang out. And I said, let's go to Rudy's. There's a coffee place right next door. Well, it turned out to be the most expensive coffee that I ever went <laughs> What'd you buy? I bought an, an old gold top that I just I, oh. I, sh I shouldn't have bought it, but but it was it was there. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a guitar addict. Right. This is the thing. It's like I don't I don't know what to do, and it's I I think it's a healthy addiction because I can always sell. There them. are worse addictions. There right. are worse addictions, and that's how I justify it. But but if it was an if I was addicted to something else, like I'm addicted to buying guitars, it's bad, <laughs> real bad. Hey, you have your own record label called KTBA Records where yeah. you release your albums and other artists' albums too, like uh, the great Dion, yep. Dion DeMucci, others as well. KTBA stands for Keeping the Blues Alive, and this is also a charity which has raised over a half a million dollars already for musicians affected by what we were just talking about, the pandemic. Yeah, we, we, did, uh, we did an initiative uh, called Fueling Musicians, and we're over, I think, almost 700000 on that alone. Historically, I think our Keeping the Blues Alive Foundation between the cruises and everything, we're well over a million dollars. And we've given money out to schools, um, obviously musicians who needed the, the, the money during the pandemic. Because, you know, when, when everything shut down in March, you know, I'm lucky enough. I, I, I tour in the winter and spring, but most musicians make all of their money between May and and the end of August. I right. mean, that's the prime touring season, the festival season, especially in the blues. I mean, it's it's a you know very lucrative for 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 blues artists, and they didn't know what to do, you know. And most musicians, like myself, sometimes are not fiscally responsible. You know, nobody really saves up; they just kind of live month to month. And, and well, that, because they, nobody thinks it's, everything is going to stop because no, it's you know it just keeps going normally. Nobody could have envisioned that a complete brick wall. You know, it's over. Go home. We'll let you know when you can come back. And um, so it was uh, for you know for me it was a no brainer. We were just sitting at home feeling sorry for ourselves. And and uh, I was like, you know, I mean, I'm lucky enough where I could weather the storm. And I said, what do, but what are we gonna do for our friends and people? You know that that are really freaking out about paying bills. So you know we, we reached out to people like Gibson Guitars, Guitar Center, Ernie Ball. Uh, Chicago Music Exchange. There you go. They, they came in. I'm wearing the T-shirt, and um, uh, Volkswagen Fender, and we started just, you know. Plus, I started calling my rich friends. You know, yeah, I was yeah, like, I was, yeah. remember that time you did? A, I did a favor for you. Now it's, you know, and um, 
by, by by the time we got done with the streamathon, we were over half a million dollars, and that money flew out of the account. That's, we had we had oh, hundreds man. and hundreds of bands of all genres, you know, um, signing up for it because we didn't make it difficult. It's like just show us your tour dates that got canceled. Right here's yeah. fifteen hundred dollar check, and and we came up with everybody's like, well, how'd you come up with the number fifteen hundred bucks? I said, well, I wanted to beat the stimulus check. You know, <laughs> pure <laughs> ego, pure <laughs> ego. I love it. Um, there was a film done on you called Guitar Man, which I've seen the trailer for. Yeah. Tell us about that film. Where can people watch it? And is it guitarmanmovie.com or something? Yeah, or? yeah you, can, you can watch it on Paramount+. Plus. Okay. Paramount released it. And um, it's, a, it's basically a documentary of uh, my formative years and what it took to get myself from an absolute nobody like you were one of the first people to put me on a radio okay when i was less than a nobody okay and and it basically ends when i walk out on stage at the royal albert hall for the very first time so it's this this journey of you know it's like how do you make it in the music business when you're really not a hit driven artist the kind of music you play isn't like the 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 cool thing at the moment but you have a passion for what you do and you believe in this concept and you see it through. So Guitar Man, it was uh, when I watched it, I, I for the first time, I was like uncomfortable because it reminded me of a lot of like, I was like, wow, we really worked hard. And there was really a time in my life where there was no guarantees. I mean, uh, like there's just it was not going to work out. I saw some th there's some really, really old footage too, mm -hmm. right, of you as a like a little boy yeah right? as a kid. I mean, yeah which is amazing like to to try and find that stuff and like you know digitize it and get it into a film and make it all look yeah like amazing you know yeah and, and you know that would, you know kudos to my mother for keeping it all she had it all <laughs> i love it uh it's joe bonamas in the studio with us uh time clocks is the the latest album and uh, Joe will be at Jones Beach August 19th with the Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band and Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Those tickets are on sale now, LiveNation.com. So the show with Kenny Wayne Shepherd and Jason Bonham, I think at one point you guys actually came in the studio, Jason and Glenn Hughes. Yes. And you came here, Black Country Communion, because you guys were in a band together. That's right. We're, we're still technically a band. We're still incorporated. So we're still a band. And we still talk every once in a while about doing a fifth album, because I would love to do one more album with those guys because it's such a fun band to be in oh my god yeah uh now at the end of the show i believe you have something special planned for the uh for the fans yeah right? you, you, you 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 i mean you you remember like when you would go to a birthday party when you were a kid and and it at the skaterama you know oh, yeah okay. and then by the end of the night which was about 7 30 when your parents were about <laughs> the, 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 the announcer would come up like all right it's an all skate it's an all skate everybody out you know and you get you know it's going to be one of those things we got a couple of songs we're going to do a zeppelin song obviously we're going to do um, a blues that jason and i did uh, that was a, Le a zeppelin song we're gonna do t for one okay and we're gonna get all the bands we're gonna try to get as many members of each band on stage at, at the same time and, right and and try to make sense of it all but those are always fun and and the idea about doing the jones beach thing the keeping the blues alive you know kind of it's kind of a i was like well we do these cruises twice a year and it's great and it's like a floating festival i said well let's do like a non-floating festival so what do we pick jones beach where we're, the stage is on it's floating in the water <laughs> we're still floating <laughs> yes i love it so but it'd be the it'll actually be my first time playing jones beach oh I've wow never okay. been out there never oh, been out there yeah i think you'll love it i yeah. mean it, it, it's just so cool because it's you know it's like you said the stage like behind the stage it's the, it's the ocean basically yeah. you know it's it's and it's just beautiful i once saw uh i was backstage for some show there and uh I, I was just hanging out, waiting for a band to go on, and then I, I see this like big, huge, beautiful boat come in and dock right. at the stage. And who gets off? The the legendary Ron Delsner. Oh you know, wow! With a drink in his hand, obviously. So come on, yeah, that, yeah, rock and roll impresario. The, uh, he I, was he was the biggest. He in this area, he was the big concert promoter. It was Del, Del, Ron Delsner's presents was like it was yeah. everything at Madison Square Garden. So like, listen. That's why I want to see him. Yeah. Rolling up in a, in a boat with a drink. <laughs> yeah, come on. Absolutely. And again, that show is at Jones Beach, August 19th, with Joe Bonamassa, Kenny Wayne, Shepherd Band, and Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Um, 
Uh, which guitar player, you know, we probably get asked this question a lot, which guitar player still just completely, like, blows your mind? I mean, I'll tell you me, it's Jeff Beck. Yeah. But who is it for you? And maybe it's Jeff and maybe it's somebody else. I'm, I'm with you with Jeff. I think um, Jeff Beck is every gener- you know every every decade every decade rolls over he's still the best rock and roll guitar player in the world and he figures out a new way to do something different with the guitar in every decade that he's been active 60s 70s 80s 90s to now and i saw a clip from the albert hall he was playing there like last month and he was doing a version of uh, the rumble from link ray and i'm like it's mind blowing <laughs> And you know, and then you look him up. I'm like, how old is Jeff now? And Jeff is like 76, 77 yeah, yeah. years old. Still looks the same. Still playing with like this youthful fire. Like, fire. And you're just like, man, you know, I I think he's he still blows me away. Clapton still blows me away. Um, you know, um, and and my friend Eric Gales, he he still blows me away consistently. I mean, just just how he he keeps this kind of youthful enthusiasm for it even though he's a little bit older than me but he's been playing just as long yeah and he's like it's like he's constantly searching for for that for the the just a little thing to change it you know right. which is great well the thing about beck is like he, he doesn't use a pick you no. know what i mean and he just you know i i, I don't know it's, it's probably a better word than manhandling but he just sort of manhandles these sounds out of his guitar with yeah. I, I don't think and you would know better than me a lot of effects. I don't think he has this insane, like the edge type setup no. for his equipment. I mean, he has a couple pedals, obviously, yeah. I'm sure, but the sounds he gets are just bananas. Yeah, I remember we did some festivals with with, with Jeff. This was probably seven, eight years ago, and uh, our dressing rooms were, you know, next to each other, and we would we would chat, and it's always great to see him. And then he would like kind of retreat into his dressing room and he would take his guitar and he'd plug it into his little practice amp that they, and it was probably just some little battery powered thing. And I should have been playing too, because we had to go on before. I couldn't even look at the guitar while I was listening to that. (laughs) It made you want to weep. And you're like, you're like, it's him. It comes out of him. And it doesn't matter if it's a little practice amp. You just give him a guitar, and he he'll figure out a way to get these sounds out of it, and that's that's complete talent, raw talent. It's not the equipment, it's nothing. It's just him. Uh, we're gonna play the heart that never waits. It's from the new album, Time Clocks. Uh, why this title, by the way, Time Clocks? You know, it's um, I just turned forty five, and uh, when we made the record, I was forty four, and you know, Blink and I, I just turned forty. Blink and I, I just, I, I just turned 35, and a decade had gone by, and I, I was like, oh my god, 10 years has gone by, and it feels like it's, I don't know, 18 months. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right, yeah. And this whole, the whole, the whole notion of, of the passage of time really, kind of, got into my writing. Right. You know, like, like things, you know, like I, Blink and I, I'll be 50. Like and I'll be sick, you know, and and it's like I really need to live life and and learn not to be so career driven because you could basically spend your whole life and then wake up and your you you fifty years have gone by. You Absolutely, know? yeah. And and that's that's something that's that was a kind of I would say a midlife crisis. It was like a you know to me it was I'm just uh, you know I I need to live a nor- more of a normal life than than just this this go 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 kind of mentality that I've had for. Forever. Yeah, since you were a kid. Uh, Joe Bonamassa is with us. The latest album, as he just mentioned, is Time Clocks. And uh, check him out live, Jones Beach, August 19th, with the Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band and Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. Those tickets are on sale now, livenation.com. Joe, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see you at Jones Beach uh, on the water. I can't wait, man. I know. It's still another floating festival. Here we go. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.